Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. The presentation will begin shortly. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today for Innovation Around Ladder Safety, the first webinar in our 2023 National Ladder Safety Month webinar series. My name is Joe Zagrabic, and I'm here from the American Ladder Institute. We are excited to have Christine Moran, Product Manager at Warner, lead today's presentation. But before we begin, a few quick announcements. The American Ladder Institute is a not-for-profit association dedicated to promoting the safe use of ladders. Its members are affiliated with the ladder and ladder component manufacturing industry, and ALI is the American National Standards Institute approved developer of ladder safety standards. National Ladder Safety Month, observed, observed in March and spearheaded by the American Ladder Institute, is the only program dedicated exclusively to promoting ladder safety at home and work. This year is the seventh anniversary of National Ladder Safety Month, and we are excited to bring you a new series of webinars covering safe ladder use. Partnering with ALI for today's webinar is Werner. Werner actively advocates for ladder safety and accident prevention through the range of innovative product solutions, in-person training, and online educational programs. All attendees will remain, will remain muted for the program. At the end of the presentation, attendees can ask questions by typing them in the questions box. This webinar is being recorded and we will share the recording with all attendees later this week. The recording will also be hosted online at LadderSafetyMonth.com. With that, I'll pass it over to Christine. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, hello and welcome. My name is Christine Moran, and as Joe mentioned, I'm a product manager with Warner. Today, I'll be taking you through some new innovations that have come up in the ladder world in the last few years that can contribute to less accidents happening on the job site. In 2020, ALI conducted a ladder safety training and citation survey. The survey was sent to ladder safety training managers via email in the summer of 2020, and the findings were collected in the fall of 2020. The survey was 30 questions and received a total of 338 responses. As part of the survey, participants were asked what type of ladder-related accidents occurred in their organizations over the previous two years. Six accidents were identified as common, which are as follows. Not maintaining three points of contact when on the ladder, using the top cap of the ladder or the top step, using damaged ladders, uh, using a ladder for an unintended purpose, an insufficient extension ladder length, and setting up the ladder at a shallow angle. The webinar will focus on what innovations in the ladder world can help mitigate the risk of these accidents from happening. So the first one was 62% of accidents on the job happen from carrying materials and not maintaining three points of contact. Um, so some of you might be wondering, what is three points of contact? Well, three points of contact means when walking up or down the ladder, three parts of your body need to be touching the ladder. This could mean both of your feet and one hand touching the ladder as you climb it. When you're working, this can mean having both your feet planted on the ladder and both your shins, knees touching the ladder. And as you can see from these initial photos here, all of these people are not maintaining three points of contact. Um, some of them are carrying materials up the ladder. Some of them are just, they just have their feet on the ladder while they're working. Um, so this is not safe. To help maintain three points of contact when working on the ladder, uh, you can use a tool bag with a shoulder strap to help carry your tools up and down. Um, this will free up your hands to place them on the ladder as you climb up and down and maintain those three points of contact. Um, in addition, it does have another benefit, which it can also decrease the time going up and down the ladder to grab the tools. Um, as some of you may know, going up and down the ladder is kind of exhausting and that can cause ladder fatigue. So this will help reduce ladder fatigue as well. Um, out in the market today, you can find some products that lock into your ladder top, maybe like a job bucket or 
um, Warner does have a tool bag that will lock into the ladder top. So that way the tool bag or your items aren't on your shoulder as you're trying to work, they're right in front of you locked into the top of that ladder. It also will increase your workspace um, since you are able to just lock your tools right in and you know use that bag to pull them in and out of. So it makes it very easy and very convenient as well. In addition to this, platform ladders can help increase workspace and maintain proper contact. Um, a platform ladder, or sometimes called a podium ladder, um, these are ideal for working at fixed heights and it's easier to maneuver than if you're trying to work with like a very large scaffold or lift. Um, it's still in the same shape as a traditional step ladder and they allow the user to stand on a larger platform versus a traditional step to perform work. Um, as you can see from the image on the slide, the platform is like a giant square, uh, for lack of a better word, and you can stand in the middle of that and be able to work uh, 360 degrees versus just facing forward like you would on a traditional step ladder. Our next accident that occurs, 38% um, of accidents on the job are due to the use of the top cap or the top of a ladder. As you can see from these three photos here, um, all three users are standing on either the top cap or that top step, which is the last step of a step ladder. Um, this is definitely a safety issue. Um, not only are you not maintaining three points of contact, but if you're on that top cap, it looks like you could very easily fall off that ladder, especially in that last photo there on that very tall um, step ladder. So to help avoid this, um, you can pay attention to ladder warning labels and instructions, which are posted on the ladders. Uh, there's a caution label on the top step and on the back of the ladder stating where not to stand on the ladder. There's also warning labels and instructions for climbing safety. So pay attention to these if you're curious on how to use your ladder safely. Um, additionally, um, working with a three-in-one ladder is good for multi-purpose jobs. Um, so what is a three-in-one ladder? A three-in-one ladder can function as a step ladder, an extension ladder, and it can also lean. This can help you avoid standing on the top step or top cap because if the traditional step ladder isn't long enough for the job, um, the user can change the ladder from a step to an extension ladder and be able to get more height that way versus standing on the last step or the top cap. Thirty-three percent of accidents on the job are due to the use of damaged and not structurally sound ladders. In these photos here, um, you can see that the steps or the rungs are cracked or bent, um, which means the ladder is definitely not safe to climb on. Something could happen to you if you're using a broken ladder. Um, so how can this be mitigated? Before you use the ladder, you should always conduct an inspection of it. Um, to do this, you walk it down, uh, so bring the ladder down to your level um, and inspect it from top to bottom before using it. Um, ladders can be damaged in transit or while in storage or through misuse and abuse, so this can happen and make sure to check your ladder before you climb up it. So to inspect, lay it down, check the rails, rungs, and make sure there's no missing feet pads on it. Also lift it up and check that the spreaders are not loose in the step ladders and that the top is stable and the ladder has all of its safety labels on it. In addition to checking the ladder by yourself before use, you can also contact your local job site safety team to help conduct these ladder inspections. Uh, one way to do this is you can go to the Climbing Pro link um, that's provided right here on this slide and sign up for ladder safety training by a safety professional. Um, once you go to this link and sign up, someone will contact you within 24 hours and start to coordinate that safety training for your job site. Thirty-one percent of accidents on the job are due to the use of ladders for an unintended purpose. Um, so as noted in the photos, these ladders are not being used in the correct manner. The first photo shows someone leaning a ladder that's not meant for leaning. The second one shows someone using a ladder upside down um, and it's also leaning. And the third one shows ladders 
two letters being used to reach a fire escape. So they're an insufficient length and they're also not meant to be leaning ladders as well. So as mentioned before, how to mitigate this, paying attention to the ladder labels and instructions is very important for safety. Um, as we can see from the photos, one of the main unintended purposes of using a ladder is leaning it against a surface when that ladder is not made to be leaned. So there are specific ladders out in the market that are meant to be leaned and some are not. Um, the ladders that are meant to be leaned have special feet and they have special leaning pads. You can find out, again, if the ladder is a leaning ladder by checking those safety and instruction labels located on it. There's also a product today out in the market called Lean Safe. Lean Safe is uniquely designed to securely lean against flat wall surfaces, walls, corners, poles, and wall studs to perform as a standard step ladder would. So Lean Safe ladders have lower rear rails to front rail connection points, allowing the user to get closer to the work when in step ladder mode. The Lean Safe ladder also has a top that secures tools and accessories. Um, so that way you have a place to put your tools and you can still lean it against the wall. Lean safe ladders are also designed with two color design and highly visible to make the ladder distinguishable from a traditional step ladder since we're not supposed to be leaning a traditional step ladder on a job site. And finally, something very important related to using ladders for only intended purposes um, is choosing the correct ladder for the job. And in a few slides, I will go through how to choose a ladder. So 25% of accidents on the job are due to insufficient extension ladder length uh, extending above an upper elevation access point. Um, so what does this mean? This means that users are using extension ladders and standing on one of the three top rungs to reach what they're working on. This is not how to properly use an extension ladder. So how do you ensure you have the correct extension ladder length? For extension ladders, the top three rungs should go beyond the area that you're working on. As you can see in the top right corner, one user has their ladder up, set up so that the three rungs are above the roof, which is what the user is working on. This is correct, while the other photo with the circle and the line through it shows that the person is just using the ladder to reach the roof and then get off. So to access the roof safely, uh, make sure that those three rungs extend beyond the access point on the roof. Uh, in addition to this, for extra stability when working with an extension ladder, um, the extension ladder walkthrough is an innovation that can help. Um, it has enhanced stability with the dual clamping system that locks the rail extensions onto the ladder rails. Walkthrough also has a wide base, which provides additional contact on the work surface, so you can transition from the ladder to the surface, um, such as a roof. So in the bottom picture there, you can see that person is using a walkthrough. Um, they've transitioned safely from their extension ladder onto the roof, which they will be working on. And again, this is not necessary, but it does greatly improve ease of access and provides stability and comfort to someone using an extension ladder to reach a, a higher access point. Um, in addition to what I've mentioned thus far, there is other common ladder safety issues found on job sites um, due to problems setting up the ladder. So one of the issues is setting up an extension ladder and losing control of it. Um, a product that can help with this is called GlideSafe. These fiberglass extension ladders were built with safety in mind. They feature a lift assist technology, which makes it up to 50% easier to extend versus a traditional extension ladder. And it also eliminates some back and arm strain of using that rope. It also allows for a controlled descent from the ladder, limiting accidents, accidents that are happening from losing control of that rope during the descent. And another common setup mistake is not opening the spreaders on a traditional step ladder. So make sure when you go to open your step ladder that their spreaders are all the way down, they're locked, 
Um, this can be part of your safety inspection um, as you're checking the ladder for some damaged use. As mentioned in a previous slide, choosing a ladder is very important to safety. Um, some of you already know how to choose a ladder, but this is again another reminder of how to safely choose a ladder and use it. Um, so first, the user must decide if they need a step or extension ladder. This can be decided based on the surroundings, such as an inside, are you inside or outside working? Does it need to lean or can it freely stand? Um, when looking at this, step ladders are traditionally freestanding and used indoors for heights less than 20 feet. Um, of course, they can also be used outside. Um, extension ladders are traditionally used outside and need a surface to lean against. These are perfect for jobs that are done higher than 15 feet or jobs where someone may need to access a higher level, such as a roof, as we talked about in one of our previous slides. After deciding between uh, step or extension ladders, choosing the correct height is next is the next step for choosing a ladder. There are two heights associated to ladders. There's the actual height of the ladder and the reach height. As noted previously, it's important to stand two steps below the top cap on step ladders and four rungs from the top on extension ladders. So you have those three rungs above that access point. Um, the next couple of graphics that I'm about to show you will help showcase how to properly choose a height for your step or your extension ladder. So this chart here is for step ladders. Um, it shows both the ladder height and what the maximum reach height for the user can reach while on this ladder. Um, so an example would be if the ladder is a six foot ladder, um, the user can reach up to 10 feet. And this is based on the user standing two steps from the top cap. So there, as you can see in the photo, that user is standing at the correct height. They're not using the top cap. They're not using the last step and their maximum reach height would be roughly 10 feet. Uh, this chart here is for extension ladders. Um, it shows the ladder height, and again, what the maximum reach height for, that the user can reach while on the extension ladder. Um, so for this one, for example, if the ladder is 20 feet, the user can reach up to 19 feet. Um, again, this is based on the user standing from the fourth rung from the top and having those three rungs extending beyond the access point that they need to reach. The next step in deciding on what ladder you need is paying attention to the duty rating. Um, there's five types as noted on this slide. The duty ranges from light to special duty. And the duty rating is based on the load capacity, which includes both the weight of the person using the ladder, plus the weight of carrying tools and equipment on the ladder. So for example, if you weigh 200 pounds and you're carrying a toolbox that's filled with um, tools up to 35 pounds, then the total weight is 235 pounds, which means you would need at least a heavy duty or type one ladder. Um, because that ladder is rated for up to 250 pounds. So just making sure that you're paying attention to both um, what you're carrying up plus your own weight can help you decide uh, what duty rating will be right for you. Ladders come in two different material types. Both have their benefits depending what work is being done. Um, aluminum ladders are lightweight and they don't rust, but they can't be used near electricity, while fiberglass are a little bit heavier, but they provide more rigidity based on their construction. They don't shatter or dent. They're tested for extreme temperatures, and they can be used near electricity. So, for example, if your work environment is working near electricity or with electricity in 80 degree weather, um, a fiberglass ladder would be the correct choice for this. Finally, all the information that we just went over on how to choose a letter can be found on these ID labels. Um, ID labels are on both step and extension ladders. They have the load capacity, the duty rating, um, the ladder size, uh, the maximum reach height, 
the highest standing level you can stand. Um, in addition, it also has the ladder model number, um, a performance indicator, and both of these ID labels can be found on the side rails of an extension ladder and a step ladder. They're traditionally on the left-hand side. So if you are curious about the information on your ladder, you need to review something, um, make sure to check out your ID labels on the left side of the ladder. And finally, just to recap what we went over on how to choose a ladder, um, look at your environment or surroundings, um, look at your ladder height based on where you need to reach and how high you can safely stand on that ladder. Um, look at the duty rating, which is again, your weight plus what you're carrying. Um, looking at the material of the ladder, um, whether it's aluminum or fiberglass, um, you know, depending what you're working with or where you're working, which material would be better. And again, referencing all of that information on the ID label on the left-hand side of the rail. And of course, lastly, always be safe and read all of the safety um, instructions before use and check your ladder. Um, definitely be safe when using a ladder. Um, thank you for having me today. Um, so that was the end of the webinar. And now I believe we'll be opening this up to any questions anyone has. Um, my colleague, Erin Blankenship, is also here with me to help answer any questions. Thank you, Christine. Like she mentioned, you can type your questions into the question field and we will uh, go through a little bit of Q&A. Looks like we do have one to get it started about where can we purchase original replacement labels? Yep. Um, original replacement labels can usually be purchased through the customer care of your ladder maker. Um, so I would just, you know, take note of what that number is and, you know, contact them if you need any sort of replacement labels. Perfect. And we do have a couple people asking, yes, as a reminder, this presentation is being recorded and we will send it out to everyone who um, registered for today's webinar and it'll also be posted on the LadderSafetyMonth.com website so you'll be able to find it there as well. It looks like the next question we have is can you send a link for the ladder training? Um, yes, I believe we can. Um, it'll, as Joe just mentioned, it will be in the webinar as well, um, but also make sure to get that posted somewhere and I'll work with Joe to get that out to everyone. Christine, do you see these coming in? Is there a couple that you wanted to pick out out of these? Yeah, I'm looking through them right now. Sorry, there's quite a bit coming <laughs> really quickly. Um, what is the typical lifespan of a fiberglass ladder? Um, Eric, do you want to take this one? Yeah, sure, I can take that. Um, so fiberglass ladders, I think uh, Nolan asked this question, I see. Um, to Nolan's point, fiberglass ladders uh, will um, you know, fade. Uh, we will see uh, fiber blooming on fiberglass ladders. Fiberglass is you know, necessary for the, um, because it's safe around electricity, correct? Um, but uh, as they are out in the environment on the top of trucks in the sun, uh, UV can damage uh, fiberglass over time. So it's very, very dependent on where uh, you live. So, you know, Florida or Arizona is completely different than Chicago, for example. Um, and, you know, it, it, it just truly depends. So it could be anywhere from, you know, two years to 10 years, but it's something that you're going to want to pay attention to, um, uh, you know, in your area and inspect your ladders and make sure there is no damage. If you're getting to a point where you can feel um, the itchiness of the fiberglass on your bare hands, um, it's probably time to replace that ladder. I hope that answers the question. It looks like there's another good one for you, Eric. Um, 
Eric is our product manager for extension ladders, and it looks like we have a question. Can you review the proper distance from a wall for an extension ladder setup? Yeah, it's, it's okay. Yeah, it looks like Donald asked that question, and uh, that's highly dependent on the setup um, and the reach height. So um, the distance from the wall is not actually something that you really need to measure. Um, you know, there's a, a number of different names for uh, this, but um, you're looking for a 75.1 degree angle on that ladder. Um, you'll hear this referred to as the fireman's rule or the four to one rule. And um, the proper setup is not dependent on the distance from the wall, but is dependent on that 75 degree angle. And you can easily find that um, by placing uh, the toes of your boots on the feet of the ladder. And when you uh, uh, set up the ladder properly at a 75 degree angle, um, if you put your arms out straight with your boots on the feet of the ladder, um, the palms of your hand should rest on the ladder and that will be the proper four to one ratio or 75 degrees. Um, if, the, if you cannot reach the rails of the ladder with the palms of your hands, that means the ladder is set up too shallow, which is probably the most common uh, error we see setting up extension ladders. It looks, an extension ladder looks safer, um, looks less intimidating, I think, uh, to people when it's set up less shallow. But in that less shallow um, uh, setup, it's actually more likely to become unstable and fall down the wall um, and the feet can slide out. Um, setting it up too steep, meaning that the rails of the uh, ladder would come into your forearm when you go to reach for the ladder, um, it's going to actually be more likely to tip backwards. Um, so what you're really wanting to look for for the proper setup angle on an extension ladder um, is, you know, with your boots on the feet of the ladder, you want to be able to reach out and put your, the palms of your hands on the rail. That's what you're looking for. It's not dependent on the distance from the wall. I hope that uh, answers that question. Very important. Thank you. Um, so another question that we have here um, from Dominic, uh, A-frame ladders that are designed to operate in a leaning position seem to be new. Do you have any more information on these ladders and are they exclusive to Warner? Um, so this is about our leaning ladders. Um, leaning ladders are not exclusive to Warner. There are many different ladder brands out there that make leaning specific ladders. Um, just the lean safe ladder is exclusive to Warner, but if you go into Google and just Google leaning ladders, you will find a lot of information um, and different types of leaning ladders. I'm looking through the questions. Um, another extension ladder question, Eric, if you want to help with this one. Um, sure. When working from an extension ladder, is fall protection required? Uh, great, uh, great question. Um, so that is not required by ANSI or OSHA. Um, it may be a requirement on your specific job site, um, but uh, extension ladders themselves do not have any provisions today uh, to, you know, incorporate fall protection. Um, you know, the extension ladder, you know, uh, when you lean it up against the wall is not uh, bolted to the wall. Um, so it would not require, or would not provide um, any, you know, where for you to, you know, clip in fall protection to. Um, that being said, if your job site does have provisions to use fall protection, um, you know, I would definitely use it. Um, but ANSI OSHA does not make that as a requirement. Um, your specific, you know, GC may have that as a requirement, but then, you know, the certain, those products, uh, this, uh, the harness points and everything would need to be provided to the workers. I hope that answers the question. Um, another extension ladder question too for you, Eric. <laughs> There's quite a bit okay. of these. Um, <laughs> when working on an extension ladder, do you need to do you need it to be tied off from Stacy? Yeah, so it is um, recommended, but it is not required. The reason why it is not required is that in 
many instances, there's no good way to tie off the ladder, but um, you do see a lot of people keep um, bungee cords at the top of their ladder. And when they climb up, the first thing they will do is tie those uh, bungee cords or hook those bungee cords onto any anchor point they can find. Um, I definitely would call that a best practice, um, but because it is situationally not always available, um, it is not a requirement, but definitely a best practice. Um, let's see, we have a question from Lee. Uh, labels placed on the ladder by the manufacturer, OSHA does not require them. Is that correct? Um, OSHA does require them. Um, so as mentioned before, um, if you do need to get new labels, you can contact the customer service of your ladder manufacturer and um, obtain new labels to put on your ladder. Um, it's also good to do this if your labels are fading as well. Um, so not just if they're gone off the ladder, if they're starting to fade and you can't read them, it's good to replace the labels on your ladder so that you have all that uh, information. Yeah, and if I could maybe just add my two cents on that, uh, the reason why they are required is to um, let everybody know the duty rating of that ladder. Um, you know, certain job sites might have a, a minimum 300 pound heavy duty, you know, rating requirement uh, for ladders on that job site. And the safety director of the GC wants to be able to identify that the ladder meets that requirement. Um, you know, due to, you know, the weight of the user and the materials they're going to be carrying on the ladder, they'll set that requirement, correct? Um, and so not only to be able to identify the duty rating of the ladder, which tells the user how much equipment they can bring up the ladder, um, but also the safety instructions need to be visible um, because uh, we are supposed to be checking um, the ladder for safe use and um, that it is still in operable condition uh, before ever use. So that's what why those labels are important. Perfect. Well, Thank you. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today and to Christine and Eric for sharing their expertise with us. We hope you have enjoyed today's webinar on innovation around ladder safety. You can find the recording of each webinar in this series online at laddersafetymonth.com along with additional safety resources. And thank you again to Warner for sponsoring today's webinar and to all of you for joining us and being so engaged throughout the month. Have a great day and happy National Ladder Safety Month.